The goal here is um, that you can you can take something from this. So if you have a question, raise your hand up. Um, there's a million different ways to do the sport, right? So everybody has different theories. Everybody tries different things, and in the end, you've got to do something that like resonates with you. For example, as we went through all this, uh, riding with Chris T, what resonated with him after all these years was feeling line in his hands. And for him that worked. And for my buddy Derek, he had to think about like the T-bar with a different angle. So when, when we go through this, the idea is just take one or two things and ask questions if you have them, right? So the, the theory behind this whole perspective here is if, if the boat's moving this way, right? And you're in a helicopter and you look down, and you cut out, everything is, is, an, is a pendulum or an arc, right? So nothing's straight. And so the idea on, on a hydrofoil is that you want the, the line here that you create when you cut, you want that line then to take you up. That's the ultimate goal. And so to, it sounds easy, but it's very difficult to do. So we're gonna go over that real quick, the actual pendulum, the definitions, and then we'll show some technique that you can work on. So when you cut out, let's say we're cutting out this way, this is the, the pendulum, right? So if you look at this, we're swinging out. So that creates the line tension. So everything you do, you're doing for a reason. And the reason you cut out to go wide is to, to get line tension, right? Then, the, and the most difficult part is all of, everybody can do the, the cut, right? But the hard part is how do you transfer that into going up? And so for years we'd be cutting, I mean, just railing out as hard as we could and we wouldn't get any higher because we were cutting like this and as we took off the energy just went that way and we didn't go up, right? So then there's the arc. So when we talk about arc and you guys are out riding today, if, if the boat's going at you guys, right? Zero degrees is straight. Make sense? Five degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees and so forth. So think about it that way, right? So if you cut out, you do your pendulum out, and then it doesn't matter how far out you are, if you straighten to zero degrees, what happens? Somebody, what happens? Lost line. You, 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 cause you lose line, foil comes up because you're now going faster than the boat. That's essentially what ends up happening, and then the foil rises up. So you wanna do everything in the sport before the foil rises up. So for beginners, you guys first trying inverts, you guys that are throwing inverts back, there's a, it doesn't sound right, but there's a way, there's, there's a technique you can do to, to begin with that's pretty effective. And so what, if you're a first invert person, you're gonna cut out pretty wide, you're gonna get really wide, and there's all sorts of theories. I'm just telling you one that's kind of worked for us. Cut some guinea pigs. You cut out super wide. You, so what's more important than even line is your body. So you're, I should probably go over that real quick. So, if you, if you have Darcy. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, so so if Darcy is so stand like this. Okay, so pretend this is the T bar, and then here's his bat. He's sitting right. So he's so he's got the line. Pretend that the lower half of him is the T bar. What people do is to take off is they lean back like this, right? You think you have to flip, and you every they think you go like this, and when you do this. And your back's behind the T-bar. As he cut, as it comes up, it rotates around his head, right? So you're you're not going up. You're just rotating. You're flipping and suddenly letting the foil do the work. Okay. So the whole key to the sport, the hundred percent key of the sport, is as you take off and you're here. You're in front of the T-bar. Any, any questions on that? Does that make sense? So you, you dip and you got to get forward. And it sounds easy, but it's not. Okay, so what we do now, out here, out wide, we have Darcy cut, 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 cut. He's gonna go to zero. What happens when he goes to zero? He's gonna get a little slack, so then he grabs underneath this leg, and he dips and takes off, and it keeps his chest forward. So if you're a person trying a first invert, if you cut out, what's more important than line at, at this point is your, is your body. You've gotta take off forward. And so what ends up happening, you'll cut, 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 go zero, and you can't be like, you know, singing a song out there. You gotta cut, flatten out, grab your leg, dip and take off, and just stay forward. And it sounds counterintuitive, but it works, because then you start taking off and you got slack, so 
You're not going to get whacked. If you stay tight, you're not going to get whacked and you'll start getting tired. Huh? Outside hand, yes, or else you're gonna get, yeah, you'll get crushed. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't wanna get crushed. Does that make sense? So cut out, and you can go like, you know, 20, 22. Cut out, slack up, grab your grab your leg, and stay forward. And you're, you're gonna go, well, how do you dip? Don't think, don't worry about any of that stuff. If you're a new invert person, grab your leg, take off like that. And then what you'll do eventually is you'll progress. You'll do the same thing, but you'll have line, and then you'll go to two hands, and you'll stay forward. And how high is the board off the water surface at that? Usually about 18 beginners. inches. How long? About 18, okay. right in there. Okay. But what's more important than all that is be staying forward. So what will happen when you do this is you'll cut out and you'll wait too long and you'll rise up and you'll yeah. unfold a lawn chair. So you gotta make sure you cut out and then as you arc, you're getting there like this and then you, you can take off. And you're basically going at zero, right? Because if you take off at 10, you're gonna get, the boat will, will pull you and you get sideways. So it's okay. So yes, you just learned a way to do an invert with no line because the, the body's more important than the line at that point. So for that's for you first you invert. dropping the line? Huh? Are you, for the beginner guys, you recommend dropping the line or just try and keep holding it? And... Well, it's different theories. I never, yeah. I, 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 you never dropped oh, it? I'd always hang on to the line, yeah. Yeah, Davo taught us. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's, that just, it's that idea of staying forward because as okay. you stay forward the foil will rise up with you instead of rotating around you so I mean you're better off landing short if you newbies doing the inverts you're better off being short than over rotating and skipping out because it means that your axis is slow and you can get it around versus if you take off with your back like this and you just start rotating you're done yeah. it's just at that point it's just luck but if, you, if you're short and you get a little bit more every time, then you're, you're okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Questions for newbies? So cut out, get some slack in the line, get forward pretty quick, and then just take off and stay forward. So the next phase, once you're there, as you start getting more air, you're gonna create, you're gonna get line, okay? So now you're cutting out and you're, you might be landing rolls or inverts or anything like that. The, the idea of the sport to get higher is you have to stay forward and go have go up like we showed, forward. And so what I do is, and it doesn't matter if you're going out or in, it's all the takeoffs end up being the same. You cut out, so I'm cutting, you know, that's what, like 30 degrees, right? So if I cut out, I'm at 30 degrees and I've got line, you're always open to the boat. You're not cutting like this, right? You're always open to the boat. So at the point where, You've got all this line tension out in the flats or at the wake, I can show that in a sec. The 100% of the sport now is after the board hits the water. And that's usually where people black out or white out. So if I'm cutting out, as that board hits the water, that's the pendulum, the arc now is I've got to make that go up. So if I'm cutting as hard as I can, and you should have the most line tension at the dip, right? So if I'm cutting across, I've got the most line I, I can get. As I take off, I've got to make sure that goes up. And so how you do that, you arc and take off at like 20 degrees. Now what people think that means and what's wrong is people will cut out and then they'll go, they'll turn like this and try to take off. And so you have to arc to take off at this, almost at the same exact time. So if I'm cutting out like this to do a roll and I've got all this line and I'm forward, I'm gonna square up and take off like this, almost as, as I'm cutting out, right? Because you've gotta take all that line and go up with it. What ends up happening, what causes rolls, what people think rolls are caused this way, what causes the rolls, if you go and you take off and you're coming straight up like this, you know, and, and I actually look at the wing, through the wings, so I'm really far forward as I take off. A quarter of the trick up, I'm still looking down through the wings. What, what would cause the roll then? If I'm just taking straight off, what causes the roll? The rope. The rope. So you don't need to do this or this. You just stay tight. The rope, the boat will pull you into a roll. Right? Does that make sense? So the whole sport, the hard part is, this is the easy part, right? The hard part is how do you get this line then to come up this way? So most people cut way too long. They'll cut and then they'll kind of slack up a little bit and then you lose line, the T-bar. So think about like, this is what Derek works for Derek. He cuts like this, the T-bar is against the boat, right? 
Then as you take off and you arc, it's still against the boat, but you're taking off this way. You see that? You don't, you don't, you can't let up. So if you're like this and you come here, you're going to shoot out. So that's kind of the technical part. Does that make sense? So you want to take off on a roll at like 20 degrees. You want to cut hard. And then as you, as you don't let up with the line, you take off, kind of rotate your body and then you come up. Now you guys that want to go a little bit bigger, right? Big air stuff. If we're hitting the wake, there's, there's, so this, if this doesn't make sense, that's okay. But you come in the wake, it's the same thing, right? So you're, you're hitting the wake. You're about to take off. You've got the line like this, right? Nice and easy. You begin to take off. You're right here, chest up the boat, right? All that line right here. And so the arc part there, so you've got all the line created, right? T bars like this, and you're coming up. The arc then is how much you're gonna arc back into the boat here. Because if you just take off on a wake roll this way, where's the power? That way. And the boat's going this way, right? So what you wanna try to do is as you come in, you've gotta start kicking that, that board back a little bit back to the boat. And when you do it wrong, like I did last Saturday, you come and you kick back too much, it kicks you funny and then the rope's underneath your board and you get scorched. So you can't, you can't kick it too much, right? So what, what, what'll happen for most people, and this is the key part, as you come in to dip and take off, right? As you're dipping off, take, they're, they're here, but by the time the foil exits the water, they're here. So, because what way is the boat going? So if you don't resist against that boat, you're gonna you're gonna take off actually that way, and, and you'll get a weird. If you watch a video, you'll get kicked kind of like a reverse gainer, and you'll come around. So you gotta work on as you come in to take off to not just think. Don't let it go this way. So you want to take off across. So they should be looking more like corner of the boat to 30 degrees out. Is there kind of a sweet spot they should be trying to keep, like? That's a good. Th I don't know. I. For me, I, all I do is I take off and I'm, I am here. Yeah. So I'm looking at my feet almost. I mean, if you watch like the little GoPro, from the time I take off, it's all, it's all in here. So the last thing is, how do you stay forward? You know, you've got to stay forward. You've got to have your eyes forward. For me, what I do, it's taking a long time to figure it out, but I, I keep myself forward with the line. So after I dip and I start coming up, the line is what, the, the foil's coming up, the line is what, and I'm not pulling it like this, but that line is what, what I have against to, to stay forward. So that's a big key. So if you're to go out today and you're a beginner, go back to the beginner, it's all about your body, right? So go out, cut, you can square up, just make sure you're tight. And if you stay tight, you're not, you won't get whacked. You open up, you can get whacked, right? So if you're trying to go bigger, or if you're transitioning from a gainer to a roll, you've got to cut out and make sure that as you take off, you dip and arc at the same time, like 20 <laughs> degrees. And just, you got to stay forward though. You're doing wake rolls. As you come in, it's that same arc, right? You, you have the pendulum cut. After you dip, you're going to be, your arc is right in here. And then you get those wings between you and the boat versus <laughs> The winds are facing that way you don't have as much power right now if you are and you'll learn if you are too much pretty quick because if you come this way and come all the way back in it's yeah it's a train wreck you can't hang on you're done <laughs> you can't hang on and you get scored um when you come into the wake to go as big as you possibly can uh are you trying to get your uh wings to come out of the very peak of the wake or the board coming that's off the peak? How do you explain that? That's a great point. So I take off, if this, so if this is the wake here coming in. You want the, you want the wings to take off. You don't want the board to ride up the wake. You want, you want the wings to take off just on the out, just, just on the other side of the wake, right? So if you have that big wake like this, you want them coming out and they're gonna be coming out like this, just, past the tip of the wake. And so I, what I, my time increases, I look at boat spray. So as I'm cutting in, and it's scary, 
when you're really going big, it's scary. So you're cutting it as hard as, I mean, the most line you can ever have is on takeoff. So you're cutting it as hard as you can. And when I see boat spray, I want that board hitting just off the boat spray. And then you crank it here and that'll bring those wings up right in here. So, Anybody know what boat spray is? Just off Anybody the time. not know what boat spray is? So the boat, you know, when it's cruising, there's this the spray off the, the back of the boat will create little ripples. Uh, yeah, okay. And so it creates ripples to where you're going to take off. So that's the timing piece for me. But Gino's right. You don't want to take off. If you take off with the board riding up the weight, I mean, your T-bar is taking off in the bubble. So it won't work. So every, every trick is almost the same takeoff. So the difference on a front flip takeoff versus a wake roll takeoff, if you do it right, it's very similar because you're cutting in really hard. A wake roll is right here, right? Chest forward, right? Lines pulling me forward. And a front flip takeoff, you come in and it's, it's here, right? It's slight because now you're going back corner of the boat. So you got to focus. It shouldn't feel... Air rolls shouldn't feel different than wake rolls, right? And front flips shouldn't feel that much different than, it's all the same thing, you've got to stay forward. And that's kind of the new thing, because the line now is the thing that's going to keep you consistent. Because if you take off with line, it's the one variable that you can control. Any questions? When you do dry land practice, highly recommend it. Um, know that like right here, look at how much line I can create. Tons, right? Well, that's not what reality in a boat. So if you do this at home, get like a bungee. Small child. So, huh? Small child. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> have that thing on. But you know, because you're cutting out and it's not this stable, right? It's like, oh my gosh. And you, you cut really hard, you go really fast. So the focus today is just find a way to stay forward. Find a way to, to pendulum and then arc to like 20 degrees for a roll. Anybody doing ball and chains today? Yeah. yeah. Are your arms always in the same position? Right. Yeah, like right here. Yeah. So if you're cutting, ride like this, like right no, if you're cutting, if you're cutting, you should be like this the whole time, right? Because you got to have a little flexibility. You don't want to be, the, you know, we call this alligator arms. You don't want to be there. You want to be. Then would you agree that at the end when you're landing, uh, your arms are most important, right? Where they're positioned your body on the landing, landing yeah the main thing is yeah if you can be in and, and land back I, I i tend to i, I got to keep things simple so i don't ever think about landing what i i, I, I just <laughs> i really don't i 100 percent of my focus is take off 100 percent. that's all i worry about because if you take off a ball and chain is 90 90 95 percent take off and if you do that right and you stay forward, which is always the problem, you're going to be close enough to be able to be athletic enough to land it. So I don't really ever think about trying to land. On fronts I did, when I first learned them, I had to think about getting my arms in. But other than that, it's, it's, if you stay forward and you slow everything down, you're dialed. Any ball and chains today? Yep. Yeah. Yeah? Well, Gino, Gino's the guy that, that invented this whole trick. Is it I want to hear your take. My take, okay, so you wrap up, which is usually pretty funny if you've never done it before. <laughs> My first. Before you start, I got a question too. Oh, so, so I have the T handle too. Are you, do you have more pressure on the, on, on, on the handle at the back of your chest than you're pulling on the T handle, or, or are you pulling harder on the T handle when you're cutting out? Well, Gino's going to be able to jump in here, but what, I, what, I, what I've done to figure this out for me, it doesn't matter if it's a T or not. Yeah. When I'm cutting out, I have to have most of it here because it, okay. for me, if I did this, what did I just do? If, if, yeah. if I go here, what have I done? What's yeah. That's slack, right? And you get your shoulders, I mean, you get two shoulder surgeries because of that. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so what I've learned. It's time for you to do that because they can fix it all at the same time. Right? What I've learned is, so, so ball and chain, the wrap up, you can either, you know, you, you cut out and you can come back in and go come here. You can do the crazy thing where you come here like this and just throw it around i can't yeah. figure that out <laughs> but, tried that times. but either way the, the the what the easy like the the way to me that's really safe is to, to cut out wide cut, back, cut in. back in you have a little bit of control and you yeah. just can climb it so here's my theory and gino is going to be the guy that can help you the most on these but on on a ball and chain 
the key for me is I'll, I'll, I'll get wrapped up like this and I'll let the line get tight. And then, then this hand here is like this. Wake ball and chains for me are a little different. And as you cut out, so now you're cutting out like this and you're not pulling yourself forward. And if you get out wide and you get the, so here's the part you're cutting, right? You're like this, same thing. So I used to have to say, cut, 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 10 degrees go. That's what I'd say in my brain, right? But so I cut, 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 I take off if that's zero at 10 degrees. So I'd cut and then as you take off, the, the whole trick is to be able to take off with a little bit of line. If I'm here and I take off, I'm done, right? So take off and then I just throw and I, and it's not across. I throw straight down and try to grab my feet. And I just stay down like this. For a while when I first learned them, I, I'd grab my legs so I couldn't twist. But if you just take off straight, you come here like this. So Gino always has his, he's always in an angle out here. And when I first did it, I'd take off and I'd be square and I'd do like a full on gainer. And then at the last 180, I'd be like backwards like this and then just get <laughs> whacked, right? That sounds familiar. <laughs> so so if, that, if that's happened to you, you got to make sure that, you know, you don't have slack on takeoff. You take off it instead of zero, you take off at about 10 degrees. And as you take off the, as the foil is leaving, you have to change the axis with your body. So that's why you come like this. I mean, some people say moon the boat, but get forward i just i just have to throw my head down like this and then what happens the boat takes you at 10 degrees right not straight at 10 degrees you start to get this nice flatter 45 degrees and so you're coming around like this versus like this hey turn off your phone yeah when do you let go of your hand like when do you let go of your teeth on Well, I, on air ones, I let go pretty early because I don't have much line tension on them. Uh, uh, for the air, that's how it's different for me. For the air, I, I barely ha have this when I take off. But wake, wake ones for me are different because all, I mean, then I have- You those now? Huh? You those? Yeah, nice. yeah. So come in. <laughs> <laughs> so you come in and, and uh, this, this one I have about 50-50. And this one I'll take off straight and there's more line. And so then I just roll off of it. I'll just take off, stay forward, right? So you, you take off, I go back corner of the boat. Don't let it slip. So it took me a while, it took me a GoPro with the video to see it. It's slight, I, I was taking off and I was tight and I was forward, but the foil went from here just to that much. And then I got scorched, right? Cause I went here and then I slipped. So I ended up taking off that way as the, as the foil left. So. I had to really concentrate on back of the boat, straight up, stay forward, foil exits the water. And at that point, you didn't, there's so much line at the wake, you can roll off it. But the air ones, it was that cut 10 degrees. <coughs> That's, uh, Is there, so Ben and Gino, are you, are you spinning or are you letting the boat do all the work? The boat, boat does all the work. The boat does all the work. I have a braid. Um, I just like the braid. I've always used braids for ski jumping and all that. I mean, so, and, and you don't really, you're not really, like you said, you're not holding on to yeah. everything here. You more or less, it's just kind of keeping the rope from, you know, spinning yeah. here. So when I do the ball and chain, I just come out and I have a, 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 a easy, you don't have to go crazy on the cut, um, but when you come into that last little bit and you're, and you're going down and then you're about to come back up, I always just let off a tiny, tiny bit. Not enough where you get slack, but if you if you do not let off, uh, if you keep cutting hard, yes. then it really puts a lot of pressure on, on this on arm here. Yeah. So, um, so when you're coming out, I, I, I like to go <laughs> maybe between 30 and 45 degrees, right? It, you don't want to get too far out because then you lose your, your finish, you, you lose your tension. But if you go too early, then it's more like a wake one. There's a lot of line tension. So there's that perfect little uh, honey hole, I call it. Um, you dip down, you let off just a little bit as you're coming up. That way you don't have a ton of line tension. And then you wanna just take it up and you don't want to let this hand off until you're almost to the top. Because if you, if you let off too soon, you'll start spinning too early. Right. Especially if you start spinning and the foil is still in the water, then your arm's really gonna get yanked, yeah. okay? So take it, all the way up and, and wait a bit before you 
say, okay, now it's time to let go and let the boat do its thing. Right. So you go up, you're in the air, and then all I do is I, I let go and then I look for the, the boat. There, there's really hardly any back roll, right? I go up and then I'm looking, I'm looking, I do my whole complete spin and I, I grab the handle and then you can almost just land it like this. And you know, it just comes right around like a gainer almost. Um, but the, the key on that is to not let your arm out. And that's what a lot of people end up doing. And I do that a lot on my reverse bone chains. Um, when you go up, keep that arm as close to the center of your back as possible. Because once it starts to go out, then that's, that's when you're in trouble. So when you come around and your arm's like this, yeah. you can't reach it and you're coming around and you go slam. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people have yeah. felt that one. So, so keep that, <laughs> keep that handle tight, tight up against your lower back right here and, and don't let it out of there, right? Keep that, that's, that's everything. You go up, you're not even hardly doing a back roll. Keep that arm tight and come around. Now you have your handle in close where you can get it, right? And then, and then finish the trick. Hopefully that helps. I want to, I want to touch a little bit on the tiny deck. It's all about the safety of it. The thing about the ball chain, if you're ever thinking about doing it, and, and both these guys said it, the boat does this trick 90-95% on a takeoff. The boat does the work. The boat's doing the spin. Okay? Now, if you let up on your cut and you take off and you do your flip, your back, you're gonna be upside down, but your back's gonna be here and you got slack. <laughs> you're gonna be like this, but you're gonna be upside down with your back to the boat with slack. When that boat catches okay. up and your hand is still back here, it's, you can't do it, right? Surgery, all right? I need have, to, <laughs> have to have to have to have to line with the ball and chain, please. You, I don't care if it's two years from now. You remember that you have to have a little bit of line on takeoff. Because if you get upside down with your fucking arm right there and that boat line comes in, it's surgery, okay? Surgery. Just guys, we'll safety. call Trent when that happens. <coughs> Trent, be ready. <laughs> Any other questions before we head out? Or is that just like, I got a couple of sticks cut? <laughs> a little bit. You guys the fronts? Front bolt, yeah. yeah. What's the beginner joke? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Where's the front bolt? Where's the front bolt? Yeah. 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 Yeah, just just remember on front flips, just real quick. When you come in on a front flip, um, you don't have to come hauling butt into the wake. Just come in, you know, nice and easy. But whatever you decide, whatever angle you decide on, just keep edging all the way through, dip down, up, front flip. That shoulder never turns like this. You never let off, and that's the most important thing on front flips. Keep that shoulder, whatever angle you've got. If you're coming in hard, you better stay leaning all the way, the same exact amount, all the way through the entire front flip. If you come in nice and easy, then it makes it easier on you. Then you can just go a little bit all the way up through. The boat, right? So if you drift in, right, you're drifting in, you're, you're gonna, you want to lean just like Gino said and go back corner of the boat. The boat will pull you straight. What I see a lot of times is people come in and then they let off and now they're trying to do a front flip when their body now is doing a back roll. And that's impossible. Can't do both. So he did the hail so. so keep that shoulder down. And then, so when I get down to the bottom, uh, I start to just climb and I just want to get up in the air as high as I can. So at that point, it's just like doing a jump. But then once I get to almost the top, I let my arms, and a lot of people do these things differently, but the arms are out and I also lift my handle up and, and that starts the rotation. And then you can also push on your front or on your feet and that'll get you going around. And then the final thing is just throwing your head. And depending on how much you did of this and that, you may not need to throw your head very much at all. Again, the most important thing is keep that shoulder. So once I get up to the top, I'll throw it and then I'll let the handle off, but I don't let it out, right? The elbow stays in here. I'll go through, right? And then when I come back around, see, I'm still leaning away. I can now, because I, I kept my arm in, now I can re-grab very easily. If you let your arm out, it's one of those things again, you can't get it, you're pulled out. And you get pulled in the boat. Yeah, you get pulled into the boat. So two things will cause you to do this. One is letting off. And the other is letting go too soon and letting your arm out. So I guess that's three. So keep the arm in, keep on your edge, and then take it all the way to the top before you let go to do your rotation. And then come back around. You should be able to sense where you're at. You can't really see because it's a front flip, it's a blind trick, but if you use your peripheral vision, you can kind of see the uh, horizon 
And the more you get in tune with that, the easier those tricks are. So, so yeah, that was a question then, guys. Do you, are you, at some point, as you're about three quarters of the way, are you looking down under your armpit to try to spot the water? Yeah, I look at pictures of my eyes when I'm in the middle of a front flip, and my eyes are bulging, they're huge. Like, I'm trying to gather as much information as I can from my surroundings, because you can't see right in front of you, so it's all the outside stuff. Yeah. So to yeah. take take Brent to the next step where you guys like you guys are really good at like the lander is amazing like just getting stretched out how do you restart that spin again like, what do you mean restart well, you never stop you, it's just going slow but like for instance like on the pictures and ferns he's, he's straight out stopped and Andrew's really good at because it looks like he basically just floats in the oh, air so you, and you then take he off so again, steep, right? it's, the, it's the steepness of your takeoff so if you take off super super steep with a bunch of line I mean, the whole front flip, you actually try not to do a front flip yeah. because you're so steep back and you got so much line as you exit the water. I mean, it's crazy. The When you see like video from the GoPro on the tip of the board, the hands on takeoff, are, I couldn't do that. I'm not flexible. And it's that much line, right? So as you take off, you don't have a choice. You're just going straight up and then you're going straight up and just slowing the whole thing down. It's yeah. not like you, so your foil is still moving, but your body is what slow, stalls. right? If you want to so go up and stall it out, basically you just go up, and then you you, you have initiated a tiny little bit, and yeah. of course a really big error is important on this. Yeah. But <laughs> you, your body, your body might be kind of stationary. You're you're still turning a little bit, but the foil is still rotating behind you. Slow, yeah. And then once you get to the peak, and you're like, okay, it's go time. I need to finish this. And then it's just a matter of just throwing yeah. your head forward and, and you know tightening up however much you need to to get all the way around and land back on the rear wing. Again. Same thing with on your feet too, like to push that board around too, like tuck in and push your feet and not put. Uh, yeah, I mean I've heard some people say pull your knees up, but that doesn't make sense no. because that's going to stop the rotation. It's pushing your feet through, and that's what makes you rotate more. That and throwing your head forward and your handle. Also, your handle placement is, is very crucial in everything with hydrofoiling. And once you get in tune with that, it's like playing pool and, and your your cue stick and your cue ball. I mean, there's, there's a lot of importance there with your handle. To make sure that you put it in the right place at all times. So. If you t I focus on takeoff more than mid-trick stuff. If you take off, focus on your takeoff, right, against the boat, you go vertical, you get higher, it'll come. But, I, I mean, the whole sport, everything's the same thing. You just gotta focus on that takeoff and the rest will come. That's it. Cool. Have fun, guys. Be careful.